That's terrifying. Yep. And many of these symptoms could be directly related to gut biome, gut bacteria. And you might be able to nip it in the bud with a change in diet, uh, with uh, addressing the sedentary lifestyle, rigorous exercise. So let let me tell you. Rest. All these things. I mean, it seems like what you're prescribing, like, oh, come on. It can't be that easy. Let me tell you you a story. It's actually the first chapter in my book. It's about a kid named Leo that I treated in my clinic a few years back. He was eight eight, eight years old when he came to see me. His parents were like a wreck when they when they came to the office because they you know he had they were just totally worn down. He would throw these epic tantrums where he'd be, you know, screaming and crying and writhing on the floor for just the most random stuff like trying to get his shoes tied as they were going out the door or you know not cutting the crust off his bread sandwich in just the right way or getting a stain on his favorite T-shirt. He had a super limited diet. He, he ate only a handful of foods, all of them processed and refined, like toaster waffles, bread, crackers, cookies, et cetera. Um, you know, they were concerned about nutrient deficiency, but every time they tried to reintroduce, like to introduce a, a different food, he would go ballistic. And they didn't have the energy to fight him at every meal. He was really rigid about his behavior and environment, so like everything had to be just right. His, if the toys in his room were arranged in just the right way, he'd, he'd fly off the handle. <laughs> the desks in his classroom you know, weren't just the right way, he'd fly off the handle. He was really anxious in, in unfamiliar environments, so that it was hard for them to leave the house for even a few hours, much less travel or go on vacations. I mean, this seems extreme, but there are a lot of kids with these kinds of behavioral disorders now. He was not, you know, he's not a- alone. Um, so they took him to see doctors locally as, and they started with the primary care doctor, then went to psychiatrists and then several behavioral disorder specialists ac- actually, uh, down here at USC, um, or UCLA and, uh, you know, first uh, diagnosed on the autism spectrum, then eventually OCD and something called sensory processing disorder, which is like on the autism spectrum where they're really sensitive to sen- you know, sen- sense, input, touch you know, sound, et cetera. So um, they, the doctors, uh, you know, they were relieved at first to have these diagnoses, but very quickly it became apparent that they were just labels for the symptoms. It wasn't anything that actually gave them information about what to do. And then the doc, when they asked the doctor what the treatment was, the answer was medication. So they first started with uh, Adderall, which you mentioned earlier, then Ritalin, uh, both stimulants, and then eventually antidepressants, which again have not really been approved as, as safe or effective in kids. And they did help at least a little bit with some of the symptoms, but then he got a lot of brutal side effects, um, gut pain, dry mouth, uh, irritability, headaches, and the worst thing was severe sleep disruption. And he had two younger brothers and sisters, so his parents definitely didn't need more of that. <sighs> and the crazy thing throughout this entire period not one of his doctors even hinted at the possibility that something in its diet or like a disrupted gut microbiome or nutrient deficiency could even be contributing to his symptoms. Nobody even brought that up. And that's not the exception. That's the rule. Um, so, you know, his parents weren't thrilled about, uh, <laughs> I mean, they weren't thrilled about medicating him, but they did it because they had no other option. And nobody suggested that it could be anything other than just, you know, uh, something wrong with their their son, but uh, fortunately, one of her his mom's friends ha- uh, sent a couple articles for my blog. One was on the gut brain axis, which we've been talking about. Another was on all of the underlying ca- causes of behavioral disorders in kids. So they brought him to my clinic. Um, we did a whole bunch of testing, as I do with all my new patients, and. Not surprisingly, we found he had a disrupted gut microbiome. He had SIBO, bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. He had uh, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and gluten was in almost every food he was eating. But he also had an intolerance of some other proteins like dairy and soy and corn and buckwheat, which were in the toaster waffles he was eating every night. He had deficiencies of vitamin D, B12, folate, and iron because he was eating just flour, basically, (laughs) you know, flour and sugar. And he had high levels of arsenic, which is a heavy metal, because the only other beverage he would drink aside from water was rice milk. And rice milk's been shown to have, you know, higher levels of of arsenic. So if a kid's just pounding rice milk, they could actually start to develop levels of arsenic that could be problematic. That's crazy because a lot of people think of rice milk as being a healthy healthy beverage, right? Yeah. So we start, you know, we started treating him, which wasn't easy because of his OCD, like 
tendencies. It was really hard to get him to change his diet. Um, so we just started focusing just on those mechanisms that I talked about, getting him some more nutrients and treating his gut and, and, and dealing, you know, trying to get some of those things out of his food, initially just switching those brands of toaster waffles so that at least they were made from stuff that he wasn't clearly reacting mm -hmm. to. And then gradually over time shifting within, uh, within several weeks, he was having fewer tantrums. He was less set off by the things that would have done that before. About four months into the treatment, his teacher f called home from school and was like, where's Leo? <laughs> you know, what have you done with Leo? And who's this guy you're sending to school in, in his place? Because it had been horrific for her as, as his teacher at school. And, you know, to the point where his parents often had to come pick him up and bring him home from school because he was so disruptive. Then I talked to Leo's mom maybe s six, seven months into the treatment. By then we had the follow-up test back. A lot of the issues that we set out to address had been resolved. His diet had expanded significantly. He was eating foods that he would have thrown against the wall just a few months before. He was more tolerant, you know, more affectionate, um, less controlling and rigid, and just better adjusted kid overall. And at the end of that time, his mom said something that really struck me, and it's really it's why I wrote the book. She said, "Why don't more?" doctors know about this like there's so many kids out there like leo who are suffering from these kind of behavioral disorders but neither their parents nor their doctors are even looking at this other stuff like the diet and the gut and all these things so it's not even a consideration and that's why i want to get this book out there because it's it, like we can't know what and 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 treat what we're not even looking for what's crazy is what you're saying is revolutionary but it's not right it's common sense yeah. right i mean it's food but the, uh, you've, you essentially restructured the, the ecosystem of this child's body and, and brought him back to homeostasis. You brought him right. back to some sort of... Uh, some Normal poor, function. Yeah. Some, and this poor kid was living with a, a diet that a giant percentage of our country is, is consuming. A lot of kids are eating sugar cereals in the morning yeah. and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and just white bread and... Yeah. Juice, sugary juice juices. boxes yeah. and juice, you know, lunch packs with the lunchable yeah. all the Cookies. crap in there you know yeah uh, it's even worse in kids because there's this idea that big food has been very successful at perpetuating that kids need special kids foods right you know they can't just eat what we're eating as adults we have to prepare kids meals you go to a restaurant and there's the kids menu mm -hmm. you go to a great restaurant that has meat and vegetables and all this stuff on right. them. what does the kids menu have on it chicken fingers grilled cheese pasta bullshit. with nothing on it yeah. just total crap bullshit yeah. and the idea you know when we go out with my daughter they always bring us the kids menu and, and my daughter's like no i don't need to see that i'm ordering yeah. off this menu yeah <laughs> and it's like yeah we don't need breakfast cereal or pop tarts or any of this crap right, kids right. just need to eat the, it's even more important for kids to eat well than it is for us because they're brain is still developing their body's still developing so yeah i mean someday we'll go to the doctor and you have a crunch you know something like this the first questions are going to be around what are you eating yes how, how are you living oh wait let's do some tests to find out how your gut is let's yeah. do some tests to see if you're nutrient deficient let's let's actually look at the causes instead of just assuming that every chronic disease is a is a deficiency of a medication yeah <laughs> That's, that's basically how it's approached. You have high cholesterol, you have a statin deficiency. So we better correct that by giving you a statin. <laughs> you have high blood pressure, you have a diuretic deficiency. We're going to give you that. You have depression, you have an antidepressant deficiency. So we're going to give you that drug. <laughs> basically how it's looked at. That is how it's looked at. It's crazy that what you're saying is eat food. Eat real food. Eat food. I mean, I think if peop if we ate real food, like probably could, that could shave off like a couple trillion dollars from the healthcare. And how much manager. more <laughs> effective would we be at whatever we're doing? And how much healthier yeah. would people be? How much happier would people be? Yeah, it's not just about health in that narrow sense of the like the absence of symptoms of the body. We're talking about your ability to perform at work, your ability to relate to your kids, to your yeah. partner. You know. I wonder how much of the antidepressant like the people that are prescribed or people that are experiencing depression has to do with their diet? I would say a, quite a high percentage.